Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we continue the series of what if Android 16 was discovered in the future. And I hope you guys enjoy. Before we get started, I hope you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be informed of any future what ifs. If we hit the like goal of 6 likes this time, I will start making the next part. And if you have any what ifs suggestions for me, write down in the comments. And if I see enough interest, I'll do it. Where we left off is we saw the results of Vegeta and Trunks' training and had managed to unlock Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta rushes 18, saying that he is ready for their rematch and begins to fight while Se Trunks takes on 17 and also shows his new <laughs> And the 16s have their rematch as well. In terms of power, Vegeta should be equal or maybe a little bit stronger than even Super Saiyan 2 go on at the Cell Saga since he got grade 2 way early on, but Trunks is way beyond that Gohan because with his hybrid potential and he's got Master Super Saiyan way earlier than normal and he managed to perfect the Super Saiyan 2 transformation, yeah, he's way beyond that Gohan. So, the androids are getting wrecked easily, but Trunks doesn't want to kill them. Since they managed to turn 16 into a good guy, why don't they try making these androids a good guy? Since while they were in the lab killing present cell, they managed to find blueprints of 17 and 18 and that they have a shutdown button. So when 17 tries to strike Trunks, Trunks goes behind the android and activates the shutdown budget when he turns on 17 and he falls to the ground. 18 hearing someone falling turns around, but this gives Vegeta a chance to also press the shutdown button on 18, so she falls and watching the fight against the 16s. They're surprised that the fight is still happening because future 16 should be stronger, but they're both kind of enjoying themselves weirdly enough. But they know that now it's time to finish this. They both remove their hands and begin to charge a hell's flash. And when they're fully charged, they fire at one another and a big explosion occurs. And when the explosion disappears, we see future 16 and past 16 badly damaged and on the ground. Future 16 says, says that they will see each other again soon and turns off Android 16. They have won. The Android Menace has been defeated. And now they're going to go to Capsule Corp to reprogram them to become good guy. So Trunks and Vegeta go to the hyperbolic time chamber to wait for future Gohan, past Gohan and Goku to leave, while 16 stays at Capsule Corp just in case those androids somehow wake up. Um, quick side note, I got forgot to say that future Gohan, past Gohan and Goku went together to the time chamber because while they had less time, but having an extra sparring partner will let them grow stronger faster. So, when they leave, they're all in their Super Saiyan 2 state, saying that they have completely mastered the transformation and ready to fight the android, but Vegeta stops them and says they that already defeated the android and now they're at Capsule Corp being reprogrammed. Goku's actually kind of happy, because he will be able to try to his powers against the android, and th they'll be good guys. So, the future warriors stay at the past up for a little bit longer, and mostly stay at Capsule Corp doing some friendly sparring and enjoying a little feast after the defeat of the androids. And the androids are now fully reprogrammed, becoming good guys, and not trying to kill Goku. Of course, 18 still gets in with Krillin, and 17 leaves to find a new purpose in life, and past 16 becomes a bodyguard at Capsule Corp. But the future warriors know that they should go back soon to the future, because they don't want to worry Bulma, so they say their final goodbyes and future Gohan telling his past self, while he knows he does not like to fight, he needs to keep up with his training, not to become a fighter, but to protect the ones he loves. Past Gohan takes these words to heart, and saying that he will not let him down, and the warrior of the future go back to the future. Was a weird sentence. When they come back to the future, Bulma runs out, greeting them, asking how it went. They say that everything went well, they got stronger and saved the past. But before they're completely safe, they want to check something, and they go back to Dr. Jerome's lab, hoping that maybe Cell is still here, because they haven't seen their version of Cell, so maybe they can also reprogram him to a good guy. But sadly, they're a little bit too late, since Cell has already went from his incubation and now in his larva form. They're kind of sad because they would have loved to have an extra defender of Earth, but it's okay. So they quickly fired a, a small key blast that completely destroyed it. Now, peace has truly returned to the future, which everyone tries to go back to their normal life. 
Gohan still tries to become a scholar because he never actually gave up on that dream. While obviously it's been an apocalypse, they're still looking for scholars. While Trunks and Sixteen work at Capsule Corp, Sixteen being a bodyguard and Trunks being a worker. But even though it's peacetime, they still keep up with their training, always getting ready for the next threat. And Bova always upgrades 16, trying to make him as strong as possible, and don't make too much of a gap against the Saiyans. But one day, Future Gohan and Trunks have fully mastered the Super Saiyan 2 stage and are trying to maybe find something beyond, but it's like their bodies can't handle more power. But they aren't worried, because they're still crazy strong in their Super Saiyan 2 stage. But one day, two weird people arrived at war, greeting the warriors. This is of course Supreme Kai and Kibito, saying that they are impressed at how they dealt with the android threat, but they came to warn about a new threat rising, a wizard named Babidi and his strongest servant Dabura, who are trying to revive an ancient evil called Majin Buu, and they're asking them for help since they are the strongest warriors that they can find. Of course, they're down to help, and Shin says that he will take them to the Supreme Kai's world to get as strong as possible. So Trunks and Gohan go, while Sixteen stays here and looks out for any signs of Babidi. When they arrive to the Supreme Kai's world, they begin their train. Immediately they remove the Z-Sword, with Trunks mostly using it, because he is actually knows how to use swords. But Gohan swings it a couple of times. Shin warns about Deborah, who is really strong and they can't use their full power because they will just give more energy to Babidi. But they have a better idea, what if they just use Android 16, since he doesn't actually use Ki, so he can use his full power and Babidi won't get any energy. The guys think it's a good idea, since 16 is a robot, he isn't going to use Ki, it's more like robotic Ki, and I don't think Babidi will be able to absorb that. So. He can go all out, but they need to be extra safe and also become stronger. So when their training is mostly complete, they go back to Earth to face Babidi. When they arrive at Babidi's ship, Babidi and Deborah are waiting for them and saying that they are ready to revive Majin Buu. And Deborah is ready to fight anyone, but Sixteen steps in and begins to fight Deborah. Deborah realizes that even though he looks like he's fighting at his best, it's not like he's using Ki, and then he realizes. This is a robot! Damn, they're smart. And they begin to fight. And this robot is really strong. Trevor ain't even him. He needs to fight defensively since he's not doing any damage bad. Bobby is surprised to see that there are stronger beings than Deborah and summons Pui Pui and Yapa to go help Deborah. But Gon and Trunks are not going to allow that and begin to fight them. Of course, they're pretty easy fights only in their Super Saiyan states. They don't need to go Super Saiyan 2 and it kills them easily, and while they at it, they kill Babidi as well, since he has no protection. The board doesn't even have time to react to see Babidi's death, because Sixteen is constantly attacking him, but to get him off him, he spits on Sixteen, and since Sixteen was never warned about the spit, he turns into stone and then begins to fall to the ground, but Shin catches him at time, so he won't scramble to pieces. Trunks are going in rage to see Sixteen seemingly get killed, and they begin to attack the board with furious strikes, and with their great synergy and incredible power, they easily defeat Dabora and kill him. And the kill actually destroys the effect of the spit, so 16 returns to normal. And they have won, and prevented Majin Buu's revival, and unknowingly, Shin and Kabito survived this time, since there were more fighters and everyone was way stronger than Jed Trunks, and they already have Super Saiyan 2. Trunks and Gohan say that 16 that they will come go to the Supreme Kai's world to train a little bit more until they fully return to Earth. 16 understands and they go back to the Supreme Kai's world, but unknowingly, someone is watching them, impressed by their power, and he's waiting for a good opportunity to strike the Earth. And that's where we live with this part of what if Android 16 was discovered in the future. Wow, you guys can reach the light goal really fast, and I tried to make this part as fast as possible, so I hope you guys enjoy. As always, if you have any what if suggestions for me, write down in the comments, and if this video reaches 6 likes, I will make the next part, and I'll see you guys in my next video.